So I have everything set up here. And so this is our entire um, command prompt command. It's a very long command. And you gotta be careful sometimes with the spacing. I have a very hard time uh, with the spacing. You wanna make sure um, if you're using Windows and you're, you want to split up your commands into multiple lines, you have to put these, uh, I guess, carrot symbols. And I think you have to leave a space in between. It's a lot of odd spacing that I had some trouble with. All right, let's just take a look at the command. So of course we're gonna have Python 3.6 and this is our script. I'm using the edited version. So the original version was retrain.py, but I made some uh, changes to the uh, misclassified text. So I, I lab, uh, relabeled this or renamed this as retrain uh, youtube.py. And the next thing is uh, output graph. So this is where we're going to save our output graph. I made a folder, uh, YouTube TensorFlow. Um, so I've already ran this once. Uh, these are all the uh, bottleneck files, fish not fish, and it saves the uh, output graph.pb. So this is the uh, output graph, uh, output graph.pb, and I've decided to save it here. But um, I think I should probably put these two in a different folder. I'm going to create a new folder called bottleneck because I think it's going to get confused. Put these two in here. So that's the output graph, the output labels. So this must have saved it onto desktop, which is not a good thing. It should be and let's just change this to labels.txt. So this is a, a much better way. Um, image directory, as we just uh, talked about earlier, uh, YouTube images. Let me see, YouTube images, okay. So fish and non-fish, so YouTube images. So this is what I copied, and it's automatically going to look at the subdirectories and classify them. All right, so the bottleneck directory, so let's just, ch I just changed it, right? So let's see. But I changed it to bottleneck directory. So we want to change it to, I'm assuming this should be good enough. So I'll copy this, cmundra, desktop YouTube. So this should be good enough. Um, so we don't have to uh, recreate all the bottlenecks. So remember, this is where it originally created it, but now since I've moved it, this is going to point to where the bottlenecks are. So it doesn't have to recreate it. And it's going to be much faster, you'll see. Now, how many training steps? We'll just do, let's see. I guess we'll do a thousand. We'll do a thousand training steps. Uh, learning rate, I'll leave it at 0.1, train batch, okay. So this looks good. So now what I'm going to do is copy this and from the command prompt. Okay. Let's see. So now it's, do see, as you can see, all the bottlenecks were pre-created, that's why it's going so quickly. Bottleneck files created. If it wasn't created, it takes a lot longer. And I actually have 8,000 images, which I'm shocked. Okay, so this is how the training um, occurred. So step zero, we have train accuracy 56.5, uh, cross entropy and validation accuracy. Now, just in 10 steps, as you can see, there's a huge jump in training accuracy. Um, okay, this might have frozen, so let me just... Uh, all right, so let's just rerun this. I think it might have froze. It might have froze. Um, I'm not sure if it's because I'm recording, but let's just run this again. All right. All right. So the first uh, step. It's a default 66 accuracy, cross entropy is 66. After 10 steps is 87%, big jump. Um, okay, so now it's working. So now it's back down to 84. Um, so it's gonna jump around every 10 steps, 89. So as you can see, one thing you can look at is the cross entropy is decreasing uh, drastically. Well, not anymore, but. So just within 40 steps, it's gone to almost 90%. Um, now it's 86, 86. Okay, so, so we've gone through a thousand steps and as you can see, if we look at the uh, last, I don't know, 50 or so, it's about uh, 94 with train and validation 91, 94, 91, 95, here 93, 94, 96. So it's in the low 90s, I guess. Um, if we look at the cross entropy, 17, 15, 13, 15, 14. So it's bouncing around a little bit. Um, and if we look at the final test accuracy, remember we actually uh, separated our original data set into three different sets. And this final test was not used at all during training. This was a completely separate, completely separate portion of our uh, data set. 
and we were able to get a 93.8 uh, accuracy with uh, n equals 776. So our number of samples was 776. So this was with a thousand steps and we used the learning rate of 0.01. If you lower the reduce the learning rate and go for more steps, you can get, I guess, a much higher percentage in the high 90s I was able to get. So let's just take a look at uh, some of the things that this training uh, cycle produced. So let's see. Okay, so this is our output graph and we're going to use this in the next video to classify images. I'll show you how to classify images. Um, so this is the misclassified text. So we were able to print out a list of all the misclassified. So we have the image name followed by, uh, it called this not fish when this was in reality a fish. Um, you can actually use a matplotlib and a Python script to sort of go through all of these. Um, I actually have one of those, but uh, in this case, I'm just going to show you some of the images that we misclassified. So we misclassified this image. Um, this is a pretty simple image, so I'm not really sure why we misclassified it. Let's take a look at another image. So, sometimes when you look at a bunch of images, you get ideas. Okay, so in this case, I guess the black is hard to see. Maybe it's blending in with the, uh, the bookcase. I'm not really sure. But if you start looking at all the misclassifications, you start seeing finding a pattern. Okay, so not sure in this case either. Um, maybe it's blending in with the white. I mean the shirt, not really sure. Let's look at some of the ones that it thought it was a fish. So let me just copy this. So it thought it was this, this was a fish. So maybe what he's holding in this case, uh, this could be, this classifier is thinking that this is a fish that this man is holding. Um, here's another one misclassified and paste. Okay. So here, here's something interesting. It found the correlation with a net with a fish. So here's a problem sometimes that it finds these weird correlations if your data set isn't uh, large enough. So in this case, there's probably a lot of images that were classified as a fish that had a net within those images. So it sort of correlates this image net with a fish classification. This can be useful in, in some ways, but it could also be harmful or unproductive in, in certain cases like this case, uh, in common sense cases. So let's look at another one. Okay. All right, so here's another one. I'm not sure if it th thinks this ball is a fish. I'm not really sure what's going on in this case, or maybe his hand has like a fish shape. Like this could be the body. So. So once you start finding patterns, you want to start putting in more pictures that are similar to the mistakes it's making. And so yeah, so that's a convolutional neural nets. Okay, so these were all the misclassified text. Okay, so we have the output graph misclassified, and these are the labels. Um, fish, not fish. Um, it looks a little funny because the not fish and fish are sort of pushed together, but that's how I guess a G file, uh, TensorFlow has its own method of reading files and reads it perfectly based on of my experience. So these are the labels, uh, the retrain logs. Okay. So these are the retrain logs and okay. So now we're going to use a uh, tensor board. So let me just show you how to use that. Let's see. Okay. So it's a uh, tensor, tensor board, log, dir, then we have to include our path. So let me see our path is here retrain log. So we're going to copy this and we're just going to insert it here. So the command is tensorboard um, dash dash log dir equals and then here we go. We have our path and we just press enter and we should get back an HTTP address. So here it's HTTP Mundra um, 2000 uh, PC 2006. Yeah. So what we want to do is we want to copy we want to copy this and I can use this in Chrome. So let me just run this. Okay. And okay, so this is what you see with the tensor board. And now we get to see um, how our classifier was performing with, so we have the, the blue is the validation accuracy and the, the red is the, uh, the orange is the uh, training accuracy. So let's just, what we can do is uh, yeah, increase this. So we had a thousand. As you can see, the validation was all over the place. So the training is overfitting and it's not uh, generalizing, generalizing the model well. So in that case, we would have to lower the, the one thing you can do is lower the learning rate. Um, the learning rate was probably 
too large and if you made it smaller it's going to be a little smoother so that's one thing you could check with the tensor board um, here's the cross entropy increase this like this okay so cross entropy as you can see um, the training was pretty smooth validation was not as smooth and then it started increasing at the end so that means it's a uh, over train uh, overfitting potentially and then you have all of these. I actually don't really look at these too much, and I'm assuming this is the max weight, max bias. So the max bias is increasing, decreasing. This is the mean of all the biases, I'm assuming. So that the mean is decreasing, we're getting to the negative numbers. So, uh, yeah, so this is something I guess I should look into more. I haven't really been paying attention to the rest of the uh, graph summaries. And final train ops, okay. So this was the layer, final train ops is a layer we added. Um, yeah, so we don't have to worry too much about this. So that's basically an overview of the tensor board. Yeah, so we essentially trained our model. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use this output graph.pb and we're going to start classifying images that we haven't seen uh, just to get an idea of how our classifier works. All right, so I'll see you guys in the next video.